I said this to you before, I'll say it again. I really loved your work on this series. Um, and I just want to say thanks. You did a great job. Thank you so much. Thank you so um, much. So I, I am curious. You, I know you're a Lord of the Rings fan. What was it? And I know you did obviously tons of pre-production. You worked a long time before you stepped on set. But what was it actually like for you stepping on set for the first time and realizing I'm going to be directing Lord of the Rings? I, you know, I have a perfect memory of that feeling. And it was like after being shooting for six or seven weeks. So I didn't have time. I couldn't find the time to to go through that, to, through that feeling until that moment, because it was so demanding every single day of, of the shoot that I, I didn't have time to think about it. And I remember that we were shooting um, in front of the elf tree, the big elf tree. And I saw that set and... And then uh, some of the extras start to arrive dressing the, the elf suits. And suddenly I realized it's like, God, I'm, I'm sh shooting the fucking Lord of the Rings thing. You know, it's like, it was an amazing feeling that moment. But it took me like weeks to, to have the time to find for that, for that moment. Talk a little bit about, if you don't mind, um, de deciding on the visual language that you wanted to use to tell the story. How much were you reading the books and thinking about the way Tolkien framed it versus the Peter Jackson in the movies and the way you wanted to do it? Well, I read the books again. Uh, they, they, they were an incredible help because uh, Tolkien is so detailed uh, in every everything that he describes that it was a great help. Uh, but also we start to look for, for art, like not, not the movies because uh, we are talking about a different age, so the movies were not not really helpful. It was more about focusing on art, and I remember that talking to Kate, the costume designer, or Ramsey, the production designer. I referenced like paintings and and movies, but not not Peter Jackson movies. I remember like talking about the dwarves. I referenced a lot of uh, Tarkovsky movies and and Russian movies, Asian State, to Kay, the costume designer, and she loved all those references, and we used them for the show. But the, most of them were references that of old movies or paintings, not 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 recent movies, because we were creating a world from scratch that had nothing to do with anything we have seen before. You obviously hummed the first two episodes. Uh, and you were not directing episodes three through eight. But was there a sequence in episodes three through eight that you wish you could have directed? Yeah, lots of them. I mean, I, I really enjoy the show, the whole show. Uh, actually, I still, <laughs> one of the sequences of, I, I think it was episode three, because the, that scene, the fight in the kitchen with the orc, that was taken from episode three. But I, I, I love that scene so much that we convinced the showrunners to, to put that sequence on episode two. Um, when you were you're in free production, you haven't stepped foot on set. It's coming. What are you most nervous about as a director to pull off with the with you know filming on set with everything you had to deal with? I mean, it's, I, in general, is the, the, the massive scale of everything, you know, and we need to fit that massive scale into a television schedule. You know, uh, I'm glad that Amazon had the ambition to take television to a place that uh, it's totally different from anything we, we we had seen before you know it was totally different from anything we had seen before but 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 it was very demanding it was very challenging to create all those set pieces set pieces requires time of preparation shooting and post-production and to fit like so many only in the first two episodes was uh, something that definitely was um, the most demanding thing in terms of what we had to do. Well, the other thing is, to me, it's it's an eight-hour movie. I mean, this this isn't a TV show to me. This is just, just an eight-hour film. Actually, I did a big, big two hours movie. It was like it's like 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 shooting a, a blockbuster, you know, like like a big, big Hollywood movie because we had so many set pieces and so complicated. But also to create those worlds from scratch because there was nothing before I uh, almost anything before I got there, you know. So we had to create that from scratch, you know. So it was not only two episodes; it was to create to all those worlds to build up all those worlds that will need to last for us for the rest of the season. Sure, actually. So you filmed this in New Zealand. I'm curious, how long did you actually spend in New Zealand? Were you working on pre-production before you got there? Like, what was the time commitment that you put in 
to, to do the series? Well, we started to, actually, we started to develop the show in Barcelona, in my hometown. So I, I, I sat down there with the production designer and we started to create lots of designs there. Then we jump in briefly to LA and then we finally went to New Zealand. It was supposed to be nine months and because of COVID, we spent there a year and a half. Uh, but it was great because at the end, that extra time gave us more time to finish our work um, and actually like spending COVID in New Zealand was hard because we were very far away from our families. But at the same time, COVID was, uh, the, the way they managed COVID in New Zealand was extraordinary. So so we were able to keep shooting while the rest of the world was in lockdown. Also, New Zealand has the best dairy products I've ever had. So the ice cream there is incredible. Yeah, I know I know exactly the, the, the place where you should go to find the best ice cream in the world. It's, it's crazy down there. So you're not um, directing any of season two, but assuming the show comes back for season three, which I'm guessing it will, uh, do you have any, uh, have you talked to them about coming back? Yeah, I would love to. I mean, the thing is that I've been so, so busy um, shooting a film uh, that I'm still working on. So it, it has been impossible to be, to be working with them. Uh, but I've been in contact with them, with all the actors, and I would love to maybe someday in the future. Actually, you bring up a Society of the Snow, which is uh, your movie. Um, yeah. When, as, as a fan of yours, uh, when will I be seeing this? And for people that aren't familiar with it, what is it about? Well, you know, it's a famous uh, plane crash that happened in the Andes in 1972. Uh, there was this movie from Frank Marshall, Alive, shot in 1993. But it's a movie based upon a different book. Uh, it's been very, very a very incredible experience because we've, we've been working with a, a cast of newcomers, all Uruguayan and Argentinians, shooting in Spanish and with all the survivors in contact all the time. So they were most of, they were on set or all the time on the, on the telephone. So we were able to recreate exactly what happened in front of the camera, in contact with them, in the same places that story happens sometimes. So it was uh, like, like I did the impossible like that. It, it was extraordinary. And I had the chance of doing that, but in a, in a much more aggressive environment because shooting in the Andes is one of the most <laughs> demanding things that you can imagine. Do you know when it might be coming out? When will people get to see a trailer? Uh, not really, not really. We are still working on on the cut. Uh, we started to work on the music, but no, no, no plans yet for the release. I'm hoping later this year, maybe a film festival. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Um, I got to wrap, but um, I think I'm going to be seeing you later today at a screening. So I will just say uh, until later today. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. You Thanks, then. man. Have a great day. 